Welcome back to the Dolly Cam. A lot of you are going to be waking up to this video. We are here live in London at the Victorian Albert Museum of Childhood. We are here with Michael Canadis. Good, Hi, Ruby Lane. good morning. How are you? We are really good. It's been a blast so far. How are you? Uh, uh, we're having a ball. We are we're having, having a, ball. a ball. Absolutely. Yes. Well, we so, are. Yes. So we should look at some clothes. We Isn't should. That what we're do? Speaking of balls, yes. Okay. So. This may appear to be a dollhouse, and a grand dollhouse it is, but it's actually really not. It's actually a closet for clothes. Look at in that. In the shape of a dollhouse. I that like that kind of closet. Yes. So if you opened it up, it would have all kinds of drawers for a wardrobe. And of course, wardrobes were very expensive in the 18th century. So you'd have a, a lock and key so that you could lock it away. Um, cottons were actually more expensive than silk so you would have to have everything under lock and key but let's start i, I want to share with the, the audience these two outfits so we have a beautiful piece for an enfantine and a beautiful piece for a toddler so toddlers a wealthy toddler was dressed almost the same as a teenager and these are just beautiful pieces to have survived. And these are in Spitalfield silk. Spitalfield silk was, was created in London. So these are really very quintessential uh, British, British pieces. Um, if you notice how it's put together, there are no buttons, there are no hooks. Mm. They use pins, straight pins. And that's where the, where the term pin money comes from. So even on little children, the, the costumes were pinned together. It was a very economical way of doing things so that you could change it very quickly. And of course, the pins were better quality than they are today. Than they are today. Yes. So, and they, in this little exhibit, they just sprinkled sweet. in a wonderful little wooden next to... Look at that. They're just sprinkled in. Just sprinkled in. But here's this beautiful 1780s dress. Look at the embroidery and on And the that. embroidery is to die for. This type of embroidery, I believe, they had that done in China. Mm. The, the, the garment would have been cut and ready to assemble. It would have gone to China. They would have embroidered it, and then they would have sent it back. And there's the possibility that it could have been embroidered here but there was quite a, a trade of embroidery going back and forth to China, to, to Europe. And then this piece, I think, is to die for. It's Sweet. a girl's muslin dress, 18, 18, 10, 12. But this is English embroidery, and it's of the finest quality. And the sleeves are Just heaven. heaven. I mean, if you put that on, you would be a princess. It's out. just, yes. And this one is right out of a... Uh, Downton just Abbey. Downton it's just Na wonderful. Well, or earlier than Downton Abbey. It would have been out of Victoria. Mm. So we're now in the 1830s. This is something that probably Princess Victoria would have worn, something similar to it. But look at the styling. It's, it's really like a miniature adult's costume mm -hmm. in the little details of, of the whole piece. I love the little undergarments in the back yes. too. Oh yes. And those were very important because if you don't have the right undergarments, your costume is never going to look No, right. it needs it to show yes. uh, and then correctly. Of course, here's a boy's dress. Boys wore dresses. And this is about 1850. And you can tell he's a chunky monkey. Mm -hmm. He's got a big chest. And then he would have worn a little kind of pair of under underpants that would have um, you know, hung down to his knees, mm -hmm. but very cute piece to survive. And then this midnight blue and black with the Greek key pattern. I mean, can't you just see this on a hiray? Hiray, I was just going to say. Like a hiray. It's just like a hiray. It's just like a hiray, but beautifully styled. And I'm going to take a screenshot of this yes. after the, the video goes up. Because I want to make Because I want to make that. Absolutely. If, if you guys are just tuning in, and a lot of you uh, from the United Kingdom are tuning in right now, we are here live at the Victoria and Albert Museum of Childhood with Michael Canadas taking a little tour. And here's a wonderful boy's kilt. And 
I believe that it's absolutely uh, all there, except the one thing it's missing is it does not have a bow tie. So it's got everything uh, that complete that you would want to have, um, except the bow tie. Mm -hmm. So that was probably Look lost along the way, but you know, right. that could be replaced easily if, if, if they wanted to. Well, we know you like kilts. Well, I'm wearing one tonight. So oh, the cat's out of the coming, bag. Yeah, if you're coming to the, the, the gala. The gala dinner, tonight. yes. But here's something too that, you know, we got to have our dolls. And here's a Bebe Jumeau. She's wonderful. In a, an original Ernestine Jumeau costume. Just superb. Yes. She has everything except her shoes. And yeah, I love her little blue shoes, but... But but they're not her original shoes. But the rest of it's original, right down to the kid skin gloves that she's wearing. Oh, look so at those, that. I didn't yes. even realize. Look, kid yeah. skin gloves. You never see that. Well, those, because if you take those yeah. off, you'll never get those back on. Mm. So those have to stay on her forever. Oh, she's scrumptious and wonderful. That bonnet look is at, just look phenomenal. Look how they've used uh, a beautiful little what we call a fashion doll mm -hmm. uh, dress for a, an enfantine as a point of reference. Beautifully styled, you know, 1880s, perfectly um, styled. Just magnificent. And then I think we, we're going to quantum leap into the 1930s where you have such a change of style in um, children's clothing. It's becoming more modern. And as time goes on, I know I am starting to appreciate this era more than I did, say, 20 years ago. Because as time goes by, it's getting older. Like this beautiful little dress here, this floral dress. This is the type of dress that Princess Elizabeth and Princess Margaret oh, Rose would have so worn. so sweet. And then my mother would have worn something similar to that, but not as fine a quality at that time because in america we were having hard times and you would have made mm -hmm. a dress out of a, a flower sack and um, those were very you know part of our culture and eventually the people that sold flower sacks realized that people were making dresses and they started to make them prints mm -hmm. and though, now those are becoming very uh, valuable because people are really realizing the cultural importance of it and then we're getting to the 1940s the war years, kind of semi-austere, and then the 60s and 70s. So much fun. And then your era, Rachel, the <laughs> 80s. The 80s. <laughs> when you were a little kid. So I love it. Well, this was that was a wonderful conversation. Michael, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye.